Hello everyone, it is I, the Witch of Paint. Happy year 2024, first of all. It's hopefully going to be a very fun one, and it's going to start off with me not actually having a new first painting of the year. That's going to have to wait for next week, because this week I was just a bit out of it. But I do have a postcard painting that I did last year, and technically I wanted to post this after the postcard had arrived at my friend's, but um... Well, let's say it's a bit stuck in package limbo, it seems. So even if it was supposed to be a Christmas present, well, I suppose it might end up being some other present if it doesn't arrive before the 6th of January, which it would be, which would have been yesterday, but not for me doing the voiceover. For me, that's tomorrow. For you guys, that's yesterday. Time is weird. <laughs> Anyways, I'm a bit glad now that I didn't paint something wintry for the postcard would be awkward if it arrived in spring and the painting on it was Christmas baubles or something like that. It's way better that I painted this instead for my history-loving friend. Though at the time of me painting this I was unaware of some of the dark things that happened at this place for Spaniards. In hindsight I regret sending this tower to my friend now. Well, not really regret it. It's got some nice fun history too. It's just, yeah, no. Oh well. It's too late now to have regrets. I hope you'll like it anyway. This is Dunagor Castle. A castle on a hill that you can only look at from the road that goes past said hill. I managed to take a picture of it while we were trying to let a car that was coming our way past. It is a narrow road there, although by now all of us are pretty much used to narrow roads in Ireland. It's no longer a surprise when a car comes ahead from you and you just have to find a way to let them squeeze past somehow. Well, it did mean, though, that we stopped long enough for me to take a picture of this rather simple looking castle, which I wouldn't... I'm not sure why... What makes this a castle? It's, it's technically just a tower? Like a single tower? When I draw castles, usually they're always multiple towers, but you can call this a castle, I suppose. This castle, either way, is made up of a big round tower and a wall that kind of forms a courtyard. Unfortunately, you can't go up to it and look inside because it is private land, so you're not allowed to go onto it and, I don't know, mess around in the tower, which I'm not entirely sure what state it is in, so it's probably for the best that nobody goes around and walks into this tower. As much as I would like to see it from the inside, but I suppose having a small inaccessible tower open to the public could cause all sorts of issues, so, you know, makes sense. It is one of three round towers in County Clare and has a turbulent and somewhat dark history, particularly relating to the Spanish Armada. If you don't know what the Spanish Armada is, here's a brief summary. It is the year 1588. The Virgin Queen, Elizabeth I, reigns over England and is having some issues with the Pope declaring that England should be, you know, brought back to the Catholic Church, if necessary, by force. I think she's also been excommunicated by that point, if I remember that right from my history lessons. King Philip II of Spain decided that this was his chance to take over England, so he sent a naval fleet towards England that was called the Spanish Armada. It was meant to sail up the English Channel, meet with the Duke of Flanders and invade England, overthrow Elizabeth I and return the Catholic religion to the land. For, as you may or may not know, Elizabeth I was Protestant. And hence, England was Protestant too. Plus, before then, Henry VIII had caused all sorts of chaos with the English church simply because he wanted to divorce his wives. Well, not just divorce them in the end. <laughs> um, but that's a different story. But the English were not stupid and definitely not easy to just overthrow and invade. They are an island and thus they have a super, super good navy force. Their ships were faster and more manoeuvrable than the Spanish Armada was, and so the Spanish Armada took quite a bit of damage and losses. They'd been attacked at night in Calais by the English and were forced to scatter, and after an at first fought lucky change of winds, they escaped into the North Sea. And of course, the English followed them, and so they were forced to take the long route back home along the coast of Scotland, around the tip of that, and past Ireland. But 
I don't know if you're aware, those seas are rather dangerous, and especially during storms, which, well, wouldn't you know, it happened to be a very stormy time of year, and so when they sailed along the coasts of Scotland and Ireland, 24 of their ships sank. One of those ships sank near the Doolin coast. The crew of around 170 men managed to make it to shore, however, and all was well until the High Sheriff of Clare arrived and caught them and then they were hung at either Dunagore Castle or a nearby place that carries the name Knokkenan Koker Hangman's Hill is what it's translated. I don't... I'm not sure how to pronounce the Irish name. Maybe someone else does, but I don't. I kind of feel bad for these men. Imagine being hunted through stormy seas, surviving a shipwreck, and then wind up dead anyway because you ended up on enemy ground. Poor Spanish sailors. Well, if anything, that should teach them not to mess with the English, I suppose. Aside from that, Dunagore Castle has been passed through a number of hands. At first, between two different very powerful clans of Ireland, that being the O'Brien and the O'Connor clans, in 1570 it belonged to Sir Donald O'Brien, until in 1582 it was passed on into the hands of Brian McCahill O'Connor, pronunciations. However, he didn't keep it for long, as in 1583 much of the surrounding area had to be surrendered to the English crown, and the castle was given into the hands of Turlow O'Brien from Innistimon, a small village that I have even visited myself. It's very cute and I love it. After the Irish Rebellion started in 1641, the castle was given to John Sarsfield, because of course the Irish can't keep their own castles. This was a result of the Cromwellian settlement, which demanded land of those who took part in the Irish Rebellion. Cromwellian is probably referring to Oliver Cromwell here, and a quick Google search did confirm that. I don't like this man, because in the years following 1641, he decided to go on a full rampage through Ireland. (sighs) I don't like Cromwell, let's leave it at that. Anyways, so the castle was given to John Sarsfield, and I was struggling to figure out who he is. So far I could find a mention of his someone probably kind of related to him. Janet Sarsfield, and I also found a Patrick Sarsfield, and a William Sarsfield, and I don't know, the search for who this John Sarsfield is proving a bit difficult, or at least was, with only, like, the internet as my guide. I found a John Sarsfield that did live in Ireland, but he died in 1531, so, like, 110 years before Dunakara Castle was handed to a John Sarsfield. (laughs) Regardless of that, the castle changed owners a few more times after that, landing in the hands of the Gore family in around 1719-ish, kind of. I'm hoping I don't, I'm not getting so many dates of this wrong. In 1839, it was repaired by Councillor Gore. In 1970, it was purchased by John C. Gorman, who repaired it again and held a party with the village of of Doolin in 1980 when it had been fully repaired. To this day, the castle is still in the hands of the Gorman family, although, as I've said, no visitors are allowed onto the land that it stands upon. So the best we get is seeing the castle from the road where it took the picture of a castle. Though from afar, it is also quite a pretty sight to behold, especially with the sea right in the background. It's beautiful landscape. Picturesque and 100% paintable, if you ask me. Hence why it ended up on this postcard, because I thought it was a pretty place, and I thought I was going to just paint it and, you know, send it to my friend. But now, it's still stuck in package limbo at the time of me recording this. Hopefully, one day it will arrive at its destination. Take this video, friend who is probably watching, as a little thing to hype you up a bit, and a somewhat late Christmas present, I guess. Well, the painting in the video should be in the finishing stages by now. As I was rewatching this, I kept noticing something that I seem to have been not so very good during the entire painting process at. That being that I seem to completely ignore the fact that some paint areas are still wet when I paint the surrounding areas. This resulted in green skies, green oceans, and a darker wall of which I managed to work around but still could have just waited for paint to dry. 
but past me was too impatient for that. Other than that though, the painting process was pretty nice and easy. I didn't go too complicated with it, so it didn't like have any underpaintings. I just decided to keep the colours very simple. The sky was a little bit of a struggle though, with it being only partially cloudy and blue sky peeking through the middle of it. I'm not sure if in the end it even looks right. I kind of wish I would have just done a completely blue sky, but that would be inaccurate to Irish weather. So I attempted to do the blue bit in the sky in the middle, but I'm not sure if in the end it even looks right. Like, if you can tell that that's supposed to be a bit of sky and the bits around it are supposed to be clouds. Eh. For this whole painting, I used the Winston Newton Landscape watercolour palette, since this is a landscape painting after all, I thought it would only be appropriate, and I didn't want to use my huge, huge, huge Van Gogh watercolour palette. As a base colour for the sky, I used ultramarine to give it a nice blue. I think at some point I randomly add in some yellow ochre or something. I don't know what was going on there. Maybe I thought this cloud looked a little bit yellow and so I tried to make it a bit yellow. I, I don't know anymore. It's been a while and I didn't take any notes. <sighs> for the hills, <laughs> the base coat was made of sap green and the tower had a base colour of yellow ochre mixed with burnt amber. I don't remember the exact way I mixed the colours for this painting though, it has been a very long time since then and past me, as I just said, didn't think to take notes on what she was doing back when I was doing those things. So allow me to attempt to guess what colours I was mixing. The most mixing I did, I think, was for the hills. The sap green was mixed either with the alizarin crimson paints grey or ultramarine, or perhaps it was mixed with all of those at once, depending on how dark I wanted it and what kind of shade I was after. I only used the tissue occasionally when I realised that the sky is suddenly turning green because I didn't wait for the green hills to dry before I... Okay, I'm going to stop now. But I didn't bother using it with a slightly green ocean. Guess I thought that nobody was going to really notice that or something. The castle I shaded with possibly a little bit of Payne's grey added to the yellow ochre and burnt amber. I just dotted it around, shaded the tower more on one side and made the windows dark because obviously there is nothing in there to light it. I'm not even certain if anybody still uses the castle. While I suppose that is really none of my business, being just another random person on the internet, still, I am curious to see how anybody lived in this one single tower. How big is it actually from the inside? How many rooms does it have? What was the setup? Did they have a fireplace? I need answers, but I shall never get them, probably. Oh well. I kept it all very simple in the painting of all, only hinting at the texture of the bricks and the grass of the hills, the lumps and bumps, the shadows on the courtyard walls, the little, I don't know, something was peeking out behind them, a bush I think, or something. Technically, there was a town in the background that you could see, but for simplicity's sake, I left that out. I was not about to make myself stress out about trying to add in mini houses. That looked okay. When working on a small postcard such as this one, sometimes less is more, you know. Towards the end, when it's all dry this time, I take my white gel pen and add some sea foam to the bit of ocean that you can see there because it was a little bit too dark in my opinion. Now that I think about it, I could also have used that pen in order to add some more interesting texture to the clouds, but I suppose that just didn't occur to me at the time and probably looks okay anyway. I don't know. In the end, my friend shall be the judge, I suppose, of how good they think this painting is. Right? I mean, I did make it for them, so it has to please them and not really please me, the artist. Although, obviously, I also have to be happy with it, which I am. I like the tower. Now, usually what I do with these videos is talk until 15 minutes is done and then go on and move on to the final result. But... The witch forgot to scan in the postcard before sending it off overseas, and I also didn't take any pictures of it or anything at all so I don't have a picture of it. I only have this video so I will simply talk about my feelings regarding this painting as the video wraps up for you. All in all, this painting is very beautiful. I like the composition, the colours, the way the castle looks, even if in my opinion it looks like blue smoke is coming out of the top of the roof rather than there just being sky above it. But that's fine, it gives it a fairy tale vibes. Something magic is going on there. Yes, that shall be my excuse for this. 
And as for thumbnails for this video, I guess that's going to have to wait until the package for my friend arrives at my friend's place. Package you better get unstuck from package limbo ASAP. Well, regardless of me forgetting to scan in the postcard, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Tell me about your favourite castle and its history down below in the comments, like the video and if you have not yet subscribed, give it a shot. You may find that you love sticking around here. Check out my Twitch, Discord and Instagram down below, as well as some of the resources I have left in the description. Perhaps you can go a little deeper down the rabbit hole than I did, and figure out who John Sarsfield was that owned Dunagora Castle after 1641. Who knows? For the time being, I am the Witch of Paint, and I shall see you all next Sunday. Bye! I, if it is not the person who has made it to the end of this uh, video thing. Well done to you. C I congratulate you and I shall not hold you back any longer. Go on, enjoy the outtakes. It is one of three round towers in country Clare. In county Clare. Haha, <laughs> not country. The Virgin Queen Elizabeth reign uh, <laughs> Elizabeth the <I> First. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> second one's also dead, isn't she? For as you may or may not know, Elizabeth the First was Protestant, Protestant, Protestant. <laughs> and then in fir uh, not thirteen, haha, <laughs> eighteen. When working on a small po post 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 post